Hello there everyone. I uh, just want to do a tutorial on wiring up LEDs for those of you who are interested in wiring up your buildings or vehicles or anything else. Uh, I know there's been some questions online and uh, I told Marnius I would put together something for him uh, with a little information on how to go about doing it. So this will probably, my guess is this will be a multi-part uh, tutorial. The first part will be just some basics on putting the LEDs together, uh, second half of which uh, will probably involve some math to figure out resistors if you're doing multiple LEDs, etc. And then the second, uh, second video will be talking about using some fiber optics in conjunction with the LEDs. So for this, uh, what I have here is uh, supplies you'll need. Uh, for here I'm using a 9 volt battery the connector wiring. Uh, this is 18 gauge solid core wire. You could use 16 gauge uh, solid or even stranded wire really doesn't make a difference. That's just what I have. Uh, you need your switch if you want to be able to turn it on and off. Uh, your LEDs of course, the resistor, and this is optional. This is just shrink tubing that you put over the uh, soldering parts once you've done it just to keep them protected and from touching and then uh, this is some pieces of fiber optic cable and for this I will put a link down below on some places where you can find it or at least where I've gotten it because uh, it's typically not something you'll find in your local DIY shop so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna do this in two parts the first half of this will be a quick and dirty just for those of you who don't care about the uh, proper sizing of uh, the resistor or who have got a set with the resistor in it and just want to know how to connect everything so there's a couple ways to do it I'm not gonna I'm just gonna go into how I do it I do them in uh, what's called in series uh, you can there's another way you can do them in parallel but it's got some uh, downsides to it and it just, I think it overcomplicates things, um, especially if you're doing, well, it only matters if you're doing multiple LEDs. So, uh, a simple LED, we'll just do it real quick here. I'll just, you have uh, two legs on the LED. You actually have the diode itself, and then it's got your two legs, and the long wire is called your anode, short wire is called your cathode. Uh, that's just FYI. I'll probably just say short and long wire, make it easy going forward. But the way that these connect in a single uh, circuit is the cathode. You have your wire come out of here. You'll have a solder here to wire come out. And then you'll have your resistor. And then this will typically be your black cable. And then on the anode side of the long wire, you know, this will be your red battery wire. <clears throat> and you'll have your battery, of course, your 9 volt. Now, typically, what you'll do here is for the switch, we'll just throw the switch here. This black wire will go into the switch, and the switch will come out and go into your battery. Then your red wire goes around and that completes your circuit. So that's just a simple single LED connection. And if you buy your like an LED kit, it'll come with a proper resistor. Um, you, you, especially if you're only doing one LED, you need to have make sure you have your resistor in there. Uh, if you don't, you can burn out your LED uh, or totally discharge your battery very quickly. Uh, because you'll be put, pumping too much power through there and then the excess needs to go somewhere and if you don't have the resistor uh, there soaking it up then it can cause you some issues. Now, if you just buy your parts separately and you need to figure out the size of your resistor um, or if you're connecting multiple LEDs together you're going to need a uh, specific resistor for it. Now, the next part of this I'm just going to get into the math on how to figure that out. If you don't care for whatever reason, uh, feel free to skip ahead. Um, you really don't have to worry about making your resistor 
too big. The only downside to having a resistor that's not properly sized is you won't get the best illumination out of your LEDs. They can be very dim, um, or if your resistor is too small, then uh, you could burn out your LED or drain your battery. So this next piece uh, may be getting a little too geeky for some, so again, certainly feel free to fast forward to a more interesting section if you don't want to know about the LED sizing. So before we can start soldering, we need to figure out the resistor size we will need for the uh, LED setup. Uh, depending on what you do, you can, if you get set, sometimes they'll come with the LEDs. If you're buying all the parts piecemeal, you'll need to know which size LED you need. Uh, to do this, yeah, you just need to do some simple math. Uh, this may look complicated, but honestly it's not. It's and just, it'll, it'll look a lot more complicated and take a lot more time to show you on this than it will actually uh, to do do the math in real real life. So uh, what we'll need is we'll need a couple pieces of information. One, we'll need to know the power from our power supply, which in this case is a 9 volt battery. The next piece of information we need is, well two, two pieces of information we need would be from the LEDs and what we'll need to know is how much voltage they require and how many milliamps they have and on this here you'll see on the LED packaging I got it says it has 3.7 volts and 20 milliamps this is 20 milliamps is kind of standard depending unless you get some uh, wacky sized or unusual colors uh, the 20 milliamps is kind of standard the voltage will vary depending on colors so this is kind of the important piece of information here so what we do with that information is we know we're going to be feeding 9 volts into our circuit so we need to figure out how much of that is going to be used by the LEDs so in our in our uh, practice here we're going to have two LEDs and we know each of them use 3.7 volts as per the packaging and our 20 milliamps so this information is all we need to figure out our uh, resistor. So just do some simple simple subtraction. Take your 9 volt, your power supply, minus the power used by your LEDs, which would be 2 times 3.7, which is 7.4. And this will tell us what our excess voltage is, which is 1.6 volts. And with this information, we need to, uh, in order, resistors come in, uh, are sized in ohms. And to figure out the ohms, you just take 1.6, divide it by your milliamps. So we just convert the 20 milliamps into the proper decimal, which is 0, 2. And the result here will give us our ohms. So 1.6 divided by 0.20 is. 80 ohms. So this tells us we need an 80 ohm resistor to put in uh, with the with the LED uh, circuit. Uh, for what we're doing here, typically uh, a resistor, the other number that comes on a resistor would be the watts. Uh, it comes in quarter, eighth, half, full watt. Usually you can get away with a quarter or an eighth. Uh, if you want to know what the actual math is to figure that out, it's just the inverse of this equation. So it would be 1.6 times 0, 0.020, 0, which comes out to 0.032 watts, which is less than an eighth of a watt. So an eighth of the watt is the smallest size I've seen. Um, so we'll, an ideal resistor would be an 80 ohm eighth watt but resistors come in some standard sizes and the closest one here would be 100 ohms so what we'll need is we'll need a 100 ohm eight watt, 8 watt resistor so that's really all there is to it to figure out your resistor I know a lot of people get scared of it but that's really some simple math to figure it out um, you could just get a bunch of hundreds and when you're doing these just use them I mean more often than not this uh, will probably work get a hundred or hundred fifty if you use one that's too large uh, say we 
if we didn't add 100 we use 150 all that will do to your LEDs is they'll be dimmer than they could be using the ideal sized resistor um, you really if you use 100 you probably won't ever uh, need anything smaller so you wouldn't have to worry about it so if you want to if you don't care about uh, battery life or burning out LEDs you can just get a bunch of 100 ohm and throw those in and throw caution to the wind uh, it really won't hurt anything other than it may uh, not be as stable uh, LED circuit as you want but this is the math uh, if you care and what you can do if you start and this really becomes important if you start trying to do more uh, you really can't with a 9 volt battery do more than two because as you can see here you only have 1.6 volts left so we couldn't even put another blue in this one uh, you could start doing batteries in series so you know we could use two 9 volts and uh, put those in series and then use multiple LEDs uh, again when you start using multiple LEDs is when this becomes a little more important because you may need uh, larger uh, resistors for those circuits but when you're doing one two or maybe three you could probably get away with 100 or 150 ohm uh, eighth watt resistor uh, but to be sure I would suggest uh, doing the math just to make make sure because again uh, this number will vary depending on the color uh, the blue ones are fairly high uh, red are much lower I think red come in around 2.2 uh, so you could put more LEDs in a series than you could uh, others and if you mix and match colors again you'll have to figure out the uh, values for each of those and again the math is always going to be the same you just may have to uh, you know, if you have multiple LEDs just figure out what your total is and this is the number that's really going to change here so with all this information what I'll do now is I will take our 9 volt battery our two LEDs and the resistor that we figured out, put them in with the switch and we'll be ready to test it out so I won't bother uh, recording uh, soldering all this, that would be quite boring so I'll solder that up and I'll be back in a second okay so here we are back and this is the completed circuit uh, with a battery to the switch resistor, LEDs and back to the battery and turn them on, and voila, you have working LEDs. Now this here is the shrink heat shrink. Uh, basically what this does, as the name implies, is when heated, it will shrink down and cover your connections. Now I'm not doing it here, uh, just because I'm just creating this for the purpose of this uh, tutorial. I'm not actually going to use these. But what you could do is you just uh, get a candle, or you can even, if you have a, a really hot hair dryer, you can just uh, apply that, the hot air, to the tubing, and it'll shrink and conform to your connections, and then that will create a solid uh, covering so none of the wires accidentally touch and screw up your circuit. So this completes the LED part. Uh, I'll film another video and put it up probably tomorrow on how we do the um, fiber optic piece. Really there's not much to it. Uh, it's just using fiber optics and a little more shrink tubing and that's pretty much it. But uh, it's getting late here now so I will probably do that in the morning so I can post this up now. If you have any questions, comments, or something wasn't clear, please put it down below. And I'll In the comment section I'll answer what I can. Um, but I think that's uh, pretty much the whole thing. So hope you enjoyed. Hope it uh, helps somebody out there. And again, any questions, let me know and I'll answer them. Thanks so much.